welcome, uh, Mr. Uh, Levy, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I would like to start the interview with a question, and that is, you have made two films about the Kurdish fight against ISIS and against terrorism. But there are other people in the region, in Africa, or in other parts of the world who are fighting terrorism. What is so unique about the Kurdish fight against ISIS? Number one, you are, you Kurds, on the front line, the very front line. You hold the line. Number two, you fight with a great uh, courage and bravery. And number three, among all those who fight ISIS, you are among the ones, if not the ones, who know better why you fight. In 1943, there was a question raised in America, 1943, by uh, Mr. Capra. We, the question was, against na fighting against Nazism, why do we fight? This is the main question when you fight against barbarity. Why? In name of which values? In name with, of which ideas? If there is a people who has a correct reply to this question, it is the Kurds. They know that mm. you know that you fight for democracy, that you fight for human values, that you fight for equality between uh, mm. men and women, that you fight for tolerance, for uh, welcoming and sheltering the other communities. You know why you fight, and this is one of the things which strikes me in the Kurdish people. Okay, and also the, the many in the world would say including many Kurds, that the Kurds are also fighting for those things, of course, that you mentioned, but they are also fighting for survival. How long do you think a nation in the world have to fight for his own, its own survival? How long should they do it before the world understands them? How long should they? Uh, the shorter as possible, but unfortunately, it takes time. You have... Uh, some examples of people who fight for centuries for a nation, and it takes centuries to get it. Mm. I am a French, but I'm also a Jew. Jew, like Kurds, one of the most ancient peoples in the history. How, did he, how long did it take for the Jews to have, at the end of the day, a state? A long, long time. Mm -hmm. centuries. I hope and I know that for the Kurds it will not be so long, that it will come now rather quickly. But it can take long. That is true. That is the misery and the tragedy of history. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, uh, and some others have also mentioned, similarities between the Kurdish nation and the Jewish people. So do you think that the world is sometimes or even often unfair to smaller nations and they close their eyes to their sufferings? Of course. When you are, when you are small, you are weak. But uh, the problem is that sometimes you have some small nations which are small by the size but great by the spirit. This is the case for the, the Kurds. Mm -hmm. You are a small nation when you get a state, when the referendum announced by President Barzani takes place, you will be a small state, but big by spirit, mm -hmm. big by values, big by international commitments. One thing which strikes me in Kurdistan is that uh, you have your mother language, of course, the Kurdish, yeah. but so many Kurds speak another language, the language of exile, mm -hmm. English, German, French, the language learned in exile. This makes the richness, the wealth of a nation. Mm -hmm. And this is a similarity, yes, of course, with the, with the Jews, who uh, even when they go to state, they spoke the language of the state and the language of the exile. This sort of combination makes this mix of smallness by size, greatness by values, mm -hmm. which is the case of Kurdistan. 
And do you think it's important for a people uh, to come out of the mindset of victimhood, of being a victim, and at some point to stand up for itself and fight for its own rights? This is crucial. A people cannot live um, all the time of history in the cult of victimhood. You have to respect your dead. You have to honor your martyrs. Uh, and the people of Kurdistan was so martyrized uh, by Saddam Hussein, uh, before Saddam Hussein. If there is today one people who has really suffered martyrdom, it is the Kurds. I was recently with General Barzani in Barzan. You had there thousands of uh, Barzanis uh, massacred killed in, in, in mass crime. This cannot be forgotten. This has to be worshipped. But this worshipping has to be overcome. And the dignity of a people is to not to let himself imprison in this uh, religion of victimhood. And this is what happens with the Kurds. Mm -hmm. Kurds are such a proud people, such a battling people. And the Kurds whom I met on the battlefield in Bashika, in Fazlia, General Magdid Arki, before they are on one foot, they stand on the worshipping the, of their dead, the other foot, they stand on the battling spirit, proud fighting, against barbarity. This is a proper of a great people and this is what you incarnate. And uh, yesterday at the opening speech of your film, The Battle of Mosul at the cinema here in Erbil, you said that the Kurds have survived ages of persecution. All their enemies are in the grave, but they are alive. So does that mean the Kurds, actually the winners, despite all these persecutions, they are the ones who won and the enemies, the enemies, the one that lost. I think exactly that. I think that uh, this is the sign of a great people, mm. massacred, condemned to death, because the consensus of the nations was, since one century, that the Kurdish will resign, mm. that the national spirit will die, that you will have a fatigue of your patriotism. You were condemned, spiritually condemned to death. The surprise is that you still stand, that your patriotism survives, that your national desire is still alive. This is uh, one of the most beautiful miracles, profane miracles, which can happen in history, and it is the case. Saddam Hussein is uh, in hell. Uh, um, the, all the tyrants who did prosecute you are forgotten. They are in, a, in the bin of history. Yeah. And you are fighting for civilizations, sometimes alone. Mm -hmm. So you used those uh, very uh, elements or reasons or factors that it gives a nation like the Kurds legitimacy. Uh, persecution and death and destruction gives them legitimacy and also a, a, a bigger reason to have their own state and independence, which was the main theme or is the main theme of your new film. You even ended the film by asking why not. Do you think now, is that your understanding that now is the time? What gives the legitimacy is not only prosecution, because again, I, I don't like being a victim myself, and don't, I don't like it for you. I never, I am a Jew, I never felt as a victim. Mm -hmm. I'm proud. And the Kurds are the same. Even if they suffered so much, they are proud. So it's what makes the legitimacy is not only prosecution, but it's survival in spite of prosecution. This is the legitimacy. And my feeling is that the time has come, yes. The time has come because um, um, such a long survival, such a long embodiment of the highest values of civilization, and because the world needs today an independent Kurdistan. This is my belief. If we want really a stable Middle East, 
We need an independent Kurdistan. It's not a gift with the world has to do to Kurdistan. It's a gift which KLG, when it is independent, will make to the world. Because at the end, what is stability? What is stability? Stability is law of rights, is democracy, is a good cohabitation between the communities and, and minorities. Exactly what Kurdistan embodies. So when you will be independent, it will be an element at the pole of stability in the area, exactly what the world needs. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the reasons why time has come. It, it may come in the next month, it may come in the next years, maybe it will, but time has come. Mm -hmm. So you reject the notion that uh, an, an independent Kurdistan would only add uh, instability to the Middle East. Do, do you think the Middle East could be more instable than it is now? Difficult, but what is the source of instability? It is dictatorship. It is terrorism and dictatorship. Saddam Hussein was a source of instability. He invaded his foreign uh, uh, countries. Uh, he killed, uh, he made mass graves of his own people and so on. Bashar al-Assad is a source of instability. All the crisis of refugees we face in Europe stems from what? From the dictatorship of uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad. So, dictatorship in the world, this is a theorem of political history, is the main source of instability. Mm -hmm. If you want to face and to confront and to fight instability, instability you have to fight, you have to have democratic regimes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, based of, on human rights. So, I know that all a lot of diplomats in the world say, but free Kurdistan will mean a new disorder, it is the opposite. They are wrong. The diplomats are wrong. A free Kurdistan will create not more disorder, but more order mm -hmm. in the area. And do you think those diplomats or anyone else has the right to say to the Kurds, now is not the time or you don't need uh, independence, we had independence, look what happened, or do you think it's only the Kurdish people's right to decide for themselves? Morally, it is only the Kurdish people's right. Now, we must not be naive. Politically, you have a game. You have partners, you have neighbors, you have allies, you Kurds. And I suppose that if you want to be realistic, you have to deal with all this complex network of relationship. But what I think also is that the Kurds have the right also to say to their allies, we paid the price mm -hmm. for you, Mr. Allies. We were on the front line when the question, when the, when the stake was to fight terrorism, was to pre when the question was to prevent terrorists to spread in Europe. Who stopped them? Who was the shield? Who was the, the, um, uh, the stopping force? It was us, the Kurds. Mm -hmm. You have the right to say that. And you have the right to say, as the President Barzani says in my film, there is a price for that. It is not um, unfair to say that there is a price in history when a people had, has made so many sacrifices, has paid so much uh, the, to, to, for brotherhood with the other peoples, there is a historical reward which has to be given. This is normal. And do you think after the terrorist attacks in Europe, especially in France, in Belgium, in other parts of Europe, now the Westerners or Europeans have a better understanding of what the Kurds are dealing with on the ground and have been suffering for years? I think so. And uh, I just want to recall one thing. One year and uh, two years ago, a delegation of Kurdish commanders led by General Sirwan Barzani, General uh, Aziz Waisi and others came in Paris. They were invited by France, by President Hollande, and I, I escorted the delegation to President Hollande. The first thing they did, the first thing Sirwan Barzani, Aziz Waisi, and the others did, 
was to go and uh, respect a minute of silence in, in the hyper cashier grocery, mm -hmm. where that just was a few months, two months before, a terrorist attack. The first thing they did, before going to Elysee Palace, before speaking in front of the people of Paris, was an act of worship and sorrow on the place of terror. This was a great emotion for the people of Paris. Mm. History sometimes happens like this. An image, a gesture, a great political or historical gesture. This day, the gesture of the eight Kurdish commanders was historical. And Paris, France, Europe understood the role you play in this world battle against terrorism. Mm -hmm. And also on the ground level, historically, there have been examples of, let's say, the speaking of similarity between the Jewish people and the Kurds. In, in a place or in a country, they don't want you to live with them. They say you have no place among us. On the other hand, they don't want you to have your own state. That was the case of the Jewish people, and now it's the case of Kurds in Iraq. The Iraqis say, you are our brothers, don't even mention independence, and when you want to have a true partnership, as President Barzani said in the Munich conference, true partnership, they do not respect or honor the partnership. So, what would be your answer? Not only that, you know, uh, officially, there is a theory that the Iraqi army is a mixed army with uh, Sunnis, Shias and Kurds, okay? This is the theory. Today, I was, um, uh, I was on the ground with the golden division yeah. of the Iraqi army. The Kurds have shrinked the, the quantity, the number of Kurds, of Kurdish uh, commanders and soldiers in the golden division and the army of Iraq in general has completely shrinked. It has gone down to five or six percent. Uh, Sometimes they are the most brave. General Fazil Barwari, Fazil Barwari, who is a Kurd from origin and a faithful, devoted Iraqi fighter. He's a minority. How many are they? So it is true that the Iraqi government, they, for one reason or another, they don't respect the, the, the agreement. In this case, my feeling, I'm not Kurdish, I'm not Iraqi, I'm a foreigner, there is a right to secede. There is a right to draw the conclusion of the not fulfilled contract, the social contract which has made Iraq now is broken. The world know it is broken. The Iraqi know it is broken. The commanders of the Golden Division know that the contract is broken. You have to take the consequence of that. Mm -hmm. And have you, you, you know uh, people or have friends among European leaders and influential people in the Western world. Do you, when you talk to them, do you tell them these things or do they know or is it something new to them? Of course I tell it, but I don't even have to tell. I, I show them my two movies. Uh, we have soon an ele a presidential election in France. I can tell you an open secret. Some and some of the most prominent candidates to this election saw my two movies, mm -hmm. Battle of Mosul now and Peshmerga. So they know what I think. And what I think, and my, my hope is that seeing these two movies maybe contributed to make up their own conviction, mm -hmm. contributed to, to make them understand even better uh, that our natural partners, mm -hmm. our uh, uh, most devoted friends in the area and in, the, in this global fight are the Kurds. And this is a growing consensus in the political elite in France. In America, the same. My, my first film, I took it to America. I went with General Ismail Ajar to a, 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 great and moving release of Peshmerga in New York. We will go for the Battle of Mosul in Washington. Same. You have in the Congress of America, you have in, you are, you have in the ruling circles in Washington, 
a growing feeling of necessary solidarity with the Kurds. Mm -hmm. In this troubled world, mm -hmm. um, where the turmoil is, is general, you have not so many reliable and faithful possible friends. This is what Americans and Europeans understand more and more. Mm -hmm. Okay, and my final question would be, I am familiar with your work, with your writings and, uh, and books. You have written books and articles on other subjects, but on the subject of Kurds, you have made films. Does that mean you understand the power of film to introduce the Kurds and their cause to the outside world? How did you choose movie or film to, to convey the, the plight of the Kurds? Uh, there is some circumstances where I believe in the power of images. When you have the Kurdish people, the Kurdish bravery, what happens in the front lines, in the trenches, uh, and what I saw since one year deserves a movie. Because great faces, great scenes, uh, 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 huge acts of bravery, this cannot be said in a philosophical way. The best way to express that is probably image. I remember the, the death of General Magdid Arki, for example. The da daily life of General Sirwan Barzani today, among his soldiers and commanders. This is true, but it is cinema. Mm -hmm. Frankly, you could not, in a fiction of Hollywood, you could not imagine, forge such a character as the martyr Magdi Darki and the greatly alive commander Sirwan Barzani. They are bigger than life characters. So documentary is probably the best way to express that. Well, I must say, I saw the film last night and I must say you brought it really to life. Thank you very much. And Thank I'm you, sure sir. many people will appreciate it here in Kurdistan as they will in the rest of the world. And thank you very much for this opportunity where to speak to Rudao. Thank you very much.